Viyarette Antalya Diplomasi Forum, where high-level meetings and panel discussions are being held on different issues as well as global conflicts. But we are here at the sidelines to talk more about Turkey's space mission. And now I'm joined by Alper Gezer Avcı, Turkey's first astronaut, and Ayhan Incirci, Director of International Relations at the Turkish Space Agency. Thank you so much for joining us today. Alper, I would like to start with you. So, can you tell us more about your personal journey? You were a, a fighter pilot, and now uh, you are Turkey's first astronaut. How did your journey evolve from a fighter pilot to the International Space Station? That's an important question and really good question. How did it evolve? Thanks to the strong decision of our great country, the Republic of Turkey. As a fighter pilot who had the chance to be able to fly in several different platforms in, in the sky and who has they had the chance to be able to serve in several fields of aviation. My dreams had already been, always been blocked with the limit of the sky that I could see with my bare eyes and the planes that I could see. Even though I had the chance to be able to reach out those sky, which is still a dream for a lot of children, my dreams as a children was limited with the sky. Why? Because in the documentaries, in the movies, whenever I see anything related to the space, any kind of scientific exploration or any other endeavor that was attempted by other countries, I would just encourage myself, hey, this is, this is a dream that belongs to the nations and the people of the other nations. So I was just content and happy with what I had already in my hands. And I was just trying to hold on to that up until that very strong decision which was announced by our esteemed president, Mr. Recep Tayyip Erdogan, in a May in 2022, where I came from a flight in the middle of the night and had the chance to be able to hear about the news and the strong decision that the Republic of Turkey has decided to step into the space exploration in our centennial, which I had, we had already deserved for a long time. Now, speaking about children's dreams, and we have all, I think all the Turkish nation have very excitedly followed your journey. We have seen so many little children following your journey to the space. And um, do you think uh, your journey has extended their dreams? Do you think they can now dream bigger to look up to the sky? Absolutely. I mean, even though physically they are the, the minor individuals of our community, they are figuring out, shaping up the biggest dreams in their minds and never underestimate their great potential. It's a great opportunity for me to be able to spend a couple of days here uh, in Turkey right after the mission and had the chance to be able to meet with them in several different cities. And you can't even believe how tremendously, how uh, big the reflection, even though it's quite new right after the mission. We haven't even had enough ch time to be able to go and travel all throughout different cities. But even in those few cities, there was a great impression that we can clearly identify it. This big journey has already reflected into their dreams. They are speaking about it. They are just putting those dreams into the drawings. And we have already been proud with our great potential of our children in order them for reflecting their potential into the future for the continuation of this mission. Now, speaking about Turkey's space mission, you have mentioned that you got this offer in May 2022. So that's a very short period of time um, for what uh, Turkey has achieved in its space mission, right? Like in, um, in a year, in less than a year, maybe, uh, we have made our first journey to space. Now, uh, where does this take um, Turkey's space mission? And what are we expecting um, for the future of Turkey's uh, space agency? Actually, the date started earlier. We made our agreement in 2020 in a September in Paris, and then we started the process. Then it comes to the Mr. Gezer Avcı in 2022 for the selection processes. But if we start from dreaming, I would like to add something more. Uh, I remember that my father was talking about his dreams. 
his dream job was becoming an astronaut. Well, when it comes to my dream, my dream job was being a pilot. Is it? When we look at the, the dreams of the children through the generations, we see that my father's childhood comes to do Yuri Gagarin's mission. But when we look at my childhood, we cannot see any development in space ecosystems in Turkey, or we don't know about it. Alper Gezeravci is embodied person of my father and my dreams together. I think all of our fathers, isn't it? Like, I remember my father telling, like, the first men going to, like, moon, they all talk about this. But in terms of our nation, we now have our own journey, our own person who went to the space, right? It's their story now. Yeah, now we can see children drawing about astronaut, writing Alper Gezeravci's name everywhere. When you say Alper Gezeravci, everybody knows that being an astronaut comes first. So it, it, the timeline is very correct from my, part, my point of the view. Because of the researches we have made, providing the data from United Nations, we see that in the year of 2020, the space ecosystem of the world made uh, almost 6, 000, uh, 649 thousand dollars on the every mission and all, almost it comes to the uh, 649 billion dollars throughout the world when we look at the projects of 2030 the space economist projects that the amount will be between 1.7 trillion and 3 trillion dollars so now is the correct time if we can leverage the awareness of space by manned missions, we can be in this space ecosystem and space budget till it comes to the 2030. This is very important because in the international perspective, if you want to understand the movements, if you want to understand the missions, their goals, you need to follow the budget all the time. We believe that we are chasing in it and we are on the right way to the 2030. So is Turkey going to step up its game when it comes to like space uh, missions, space industry? We have already done it. You see, we, <laughs> we are here. We have, we have made the uh, first step, right? We have made the first step by sending Alper Bey to space. But are we expecting uh, any more Turkish people going to space anytime soon? We will, have, will we have like more Turkish astronauts? You know, the basic goal was experiments, scientific experiments. Mr. Gezeravci have completed successfully many experiments over there. We are now looking for new experiments from our scientists, academicians. If they come to one point, why not? Yes, let's do it. And we are also working on, you know, to a Jahangir mission also. Uh, and we have other projects also in space sector. We declared our national space program in 2019. So we will abide by it. We will go on it. That's something to emphasize, actually. Our manned space mission was just one out of 10 goals. Yes. And the other nine goals are already being iterated. That's, the, that's something we are also quite proud of because we have already been one out of 10 countries who have been able to construct its own satellite and send it to the to the space for the national goals. We have already been doing that and every year in a quite uh, developing manner. And manned mission was just proudly one out of 10 goals. And the other goals are also uh, going running to the targets. Now, speaking about men uh, missions, I think what you have highlighted here is quite important that you have done some like significant scientific, uh, scientific experiments uh, in space. What can you tell us more about uh, your experiments, but also your um, experience in space? Um, our esteemed uh, instructor had already mentioned uh, some of the key points about it, uh, specifically focusing about how aggressively the space industry and the ecosystem is growing and pers perspective for the future time, uh, Turkey absolutely deserve to get its rights from this ecosystem. And those scientific missions, even though 
they are titled scientific missions. They are our investments into the future uh, shareholders of this growing ecosystem. One of them was a life support system, which is just being tested if it matches with the same results that we have already achieved here on the ground, here on Earth. And initial results has made us, have made us really happy already. And they are working on the scientific level um, iterations of the results to import them into the, invest them into the uh, academic world. And that is hopefully going to be another milestone for the future plans of the lunar and then the Mars explorations. So we, can we say, Turkey is making its um, space, I don't want to say making its space in space, but uh, we will see more manned and unmanned missions, also uh, its space mission to move forward. We can say both, manned or unmanned missions, because they are all for Turkey's future, Turkey's next generations. Uh, we st I mentioned two years, you know, 2019 we started to develop our agreements and what we are going to do after this manned mission. Firstly, we started with organizing international space related congresses in Turkey in 25th on 25th of April, we are going to have space technology conference in Ankara. It is the biggest one in Eurasia. Central Eurasia's biggest space technology conference will be in Turkey. And especially the Champions League of space conferences is IAC, International Astronautical Congress. It is the biggest one. We ran a challenging bid for it and we got it. We will do it in Antalya in 2016. And when you look at these years, periods, you see that we are very serious about our 2030 goals, which are in parallel with Turkey's international goals. You see in conflicting areas, Turkey is always on the side of peace. And we believe that, we believe in the function of space, peacemaker function. And this peacemaker function has a multiplier effect on the nations. When you look at the nations and people working in space sector, sector, space experiments, you see that there are a lot of people coming from the conflicting areas, but they can do it very well in peaceful environment in the space. We don't have any borders in the space, so why do we have any conflict arising from borders? Let's do it in space, and space is vast. So it's for everyone. We are on the side of that peace part, actually. Now, advancing diplomacy in times of turmoil is the theme of this uh, Antalya Diplomacy Forum. And you will be taking part in um, uh, forum yourself on um, space diplomacy. I think it's a very new area, as you have mentioned, no borders in the space. So how will this apply to Turkey's foreign policy, let's say, Turkey's space policy? Antalya Diplomacy Forum has already its repetition. And it shows that we are a, not just a game member. We are not just a player in this diplomacy. We are game changer anymore. When you look at our guests, you see the general secretary of International Astronautical Federation from France, which is the oldest and largest space related international organization. And I would like to draw your attention to the dates again we become a member of IAF, International Astronautical Federation, in 2021. And we ran a bit to host IAC in 2025, but we couldn't make it. Now we get it in our second try. This is very important. Our another yes is from Eurozie, which is an international awareness space organization of ESA, European Union. The other one is Madame Yuchi from Asia Pacific Space Corporation from China. And the host is the president of Turkish Space Agency, Mr. Yusuf Kraj. And we have also Turkish astronauts. When you look at the map and look at the diversity of the organizations, I think we can get the answer. I think we all agree now that 
uh, Turkey is uh, stronger ever in its space mission. And speaking about uh, being a game changer in this industry, I think uh, Alper Bey is the game changer in Turkey's space mission as the first astronaut who traveled to the space. Um, as a final question, can I get your suggestions for uh, little children, for young people who are looking into carry this mission further? I just want to emphasize one thing. The game changer is the strong decision of our governments, of our strong country. We believe that we deserve our space in the space, and we made it. And as our ancestors have already mentioned several other things in quite a correct way, we also have a good, good you know, uh, saying about it. Taking the initial step, starting something, is already half of beginning, uh, finishing, an accomplishment. So we took the, the difficult part, we already started, and that will keep going. My recommendations to our young generations is that I have already been quite proud of our nation's practical minds and great potential. I absolutely believe that that always infused the self-confidence in my veins, that we have a really great potential. So this was a clear indication when the Turkish people are given a chance, we can achieve anything. And their motto should always be like this. If a single person could ever do something, they can also do it. Just let themselves to keep their self-confidence standard and then believe in their great potential. Thank you both very much. I think we all now have a lot to look forward to in Turkey's space mission. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.